This is Twit. The thing I tell everybody is, I think you guys would agree with that. If you want to make the internet private, you're going to break the internet. That's what the right to be forgotten does. It breaks the Amen. internet. And so, yes, I can see all sorts of horrific scenarios, but the fact is using the internet is not private any more than going to the mall is private. And trying to mold the internet to make it private is going to break it. Just as if you said, I have the right to be private at the mall, you don't. So don't go, all I can say is don't go to the mall. I don't think it's possible to make the internet private. Well, it's not possible to have a presumption of privacy in public because then we, this is what I wrote in my book. This is what we, when we ruin the notion of, of not just the internet, but of, of, of public. Right. And it ruins things like journalism. Oh, no, 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 you can't report on me, the mayor, being caught going into the opium den because I have a presumption of privacy. No. What did you think of Anil's wonderful article in Medium? Oh, uh, yes. I'm glad you asked, Lulio. I was yeah. going to ask, but I didn't want to. Such a great article. Uh, and I think so right on about this whole issue of privacy. Did you, I'm sure you yeah. read it, Jeff, right? I uh, started to and then forgot to go back to it. <laughs> uh, TLDR. Because 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 there was also, I think Zainab did a response to him. Or Dana did a response on what is privacy, yeah. Yeah. And she, now Dana Boyd, of course, uh, and by the way, she's had something to say about uh, all of this stuff, uh, but uh, I presume she would err on the side of privacy because she, she, with all her work with young people, she understands how important privacy is to them. Well, but no, Dana also understands the value of publicness and sharing and, and, and sees a techno panic. Dana's very... Um, quite, quite, quite rational about these topics. And, okay. uh, and, and sort of I just thought what Anil brought up was really right on his, his article, What is Public? It's so simple, right? He says, uh, he points out that, let's say uh, an addiction recovery group decides to take advantage of the summer weather and meet in a park uh, across the street. Legally, you could take photos of the members. You could tag it with the names of their employers, friends, and family, make sure no one missed it. Conversations that take place in public parks are public. We have this problem now with drones. Uh, paparazzi are using drones, and it isn't illegal unless it violates FAA rules because you're in public. He says public is not simply defined. It's a fragile set of social conventions about what behaviors are acceptable and appropriate. He kind of berates media, the news media that benefits from the gray area by, for instance, republishing tweets by saying, well, hey, it's in the public eye. Well, I think this is where he, Anil, and Jeff probably depart, uh, you know, yeah. because Anil is arguing for consent in journalism. Um, and uh, he and I have had this debate over lunch a few times, <laughs> and, I, and I wouldn't necessarily go that far. He quotes uh, Hamilton Nolan of Gawker, the things you write on Twitter are public. They are published on the World Wide Web. They can be read almost instantly by anyone with an Internet connection on the planet Earth. This is not a bug in Twitter. It's a feature. This is something that sounds like he's it's, channeling it's feature, Jeff. It's a feature of society. You know, if I, if I, all right, so, so we're off the air and I tell you something, Leo, uh, not, not, I mean, not on the, off the air when we're, we're not on the show, but we're, we're in the pre or post show. No, no, no. I mean, we're in your office. We're okay. Your we're office. in my office. And I tell you something, the way I expressed it in public parts is that there's the privacy is a responsibility. It's an ethic of knowing someone else's information. And so once I've told you it is public to that extent, I no longer control that at all. However, I can't, I can't in the past, it. there has been, I think, in journalism, a scale that you can weigh it on, public good versus personal privacy. And if, for instance, you are the Attorney General of the United States, you have a lowered expectation because the public needs to know if you're up, you know, you're up to no good. Whereas if it's just some guy down the street, there is a... there is kind of a burden on the journalist to say, let's respect that guy's privacy, even though he's put it on Twitter. Um, yeah, there's more, not a need to of, know this, right? And it's not privacy. It's not privacy. It's more of a, a a question of choosing not to use the power of media to give notoriety to something that doesn't deserve notoriety. I think that's all that Anil is calling for, is let's... But there is, but, but, but. It's not just the internet. It's not just technology. Whenever I've told anyone through history, you know, we learned this on the third grade playground. You tell somebody something and you think they're not going to tell everybody and you go to the lunchroom table and they've told everybody. And it's uncool. Uh, well, or, 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 or it is or it isn't. The point and if is, they say, the well, that's who, my right because you said it in public, I'm going to sock them. The person who receives, well, but, 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 but 
I tell you I have prostate cancer and a malfunctioning penis. You think, well, I'm going to keep that quiet. And then I go around and I'm broadcasting. Well, that's your choice. World. That is, but that's right. But that's your choice. But, but the point is, the point is, you you have to judge the context, which is a, which is a point that Helen Weber makes at NYU. Uh, and it's very hard to do. The reader, you, you, you or the person whose privacy was violated. So in this case, I told you in your office this. And and I may be telling you because I I, I I'm confiding in a, in a in a male friend of mine. I may be telling you because I want to make sure you get tested. I may be telling you because I want you to spread the word in your powerful voice and get other people tested. You know, there, there's a context to this. I understand, but the issue that Neil's raising is there is a there is there are in some cases a real journalistic respons responsibility uh, to reveal That's this information, privacy. and then there That's are in some cases uh, it's exploitation. That yeah, is good that's, for that's business, sure. but it is there is no private. public need to know. It's irresponsibility. It's, yeah. it's notoriety. All it's of it is technically but public, privacy. but that's Im an important consideration when revealing. And what he's saying is the business models of some of the most powerful forces in society are increasingly, de the media, are increasingly dependent on our complicity in making our conversations, our creations, our communities public whenever they but can Twitter exploit is public. them. Twitter is – the difference is this. If I go to Facebook and I do a private message to you or I go to email and a private message to you, same as if I do on the street, same issues I just outlined. Twitter is different because I can go to Twitter and I can search on – I understand. Embarrassing no, of course. All of this is factually true. He's just saying don't be a jerk. Right. There's a difference between technically public, right, and uh, of course, factually, it's fragile public. Fragile social conventions. But don't be an but asshole. There's a difference. There's no, but they're yeah, fine. But there's also a difference. It is a more public act. Being on Twitter is a more public act than telling well, someone. Well, I disagree. I think channel. I think a lot of people use Twitter knowing it's public, but they're having a, a semi-private conversation. They're at replying somebody else. They know that technically it's public. What they don't Tough expect. Dingoes. And you think it's completely I, I, wrong of them to expect that people will buy yeah, social more alone? Of, because of the functionality, Leo, of search. Two things can happen. One is somebody, whoever I said this to, can retweet it and it can go around the world. And then who's at, who's at fault there? You know, the first retweeter, the tenth retweeter. Second, Twitter search. If I go searching for, you know, small penis pictures, uh, God knows what I'll find, but, I, you know, I'll find them. And, and it is, that, that's known. If I put it up on a web, if I if I put up a web page and I only tell you the URL, but Google finds it, is that wrong? No, it's on the net. It's what public. do you think, Gina? I mean, uh, you know, I, I agree with Anil that it's like it's extremely complicated. Um, but I, I mean, uh, does the reason why part of this came up is because uh, you know Shanley Kane was getting profiled by Medium by Elizabeth uh, Spears or Spires, and and she Spires. objected to the entire process because she felt like she w did not give her consent. There was a point during the interview where she felt like the questions were invasive and she didn't want to participate. And Liz basically said, "Look, I'm doing this profile. I'm going to talk to your friends and family. This is how journalism works." And Shanley was like, "This should, you know, this." This is this is harassment. You, you know, you should you should require my consent. And then that that prompted Jason Calcana saying journalism doesn't require consent. Um, and I I actually agree. I don't think that journalism does require consent. Yeah. Uh, and and Anil was saying in that piece, you know, that he that that he thinks that it should. I, I think that that would mean that you know only the stories that people were okay with getting reported would get reported, and and uh, and exactly. that that I think would do a, a great disservice. So um, so I, I agree with Anil's larger point that it's complicated and it's nuanced. And and Dana's take on the the privacy part of it was kind of the same thing. Um, that it's nuanced and, and complicated, and it's not about whether or not something is technically public or private. It's it's about social convention and mores, and those things have to evolve, especially with the new tools that we have, um, and they are new tools. But I don't think there are, you know there there are sort of black and white lines here on this. Here's what Dana says, and I, I actually very much agree with Dana Boyd. She says the very practice of privacy is all about control in a world in which we fully know we never have control. Our friends might betray us, our spaces might be surveilled, our expectations right. might be shattered, but this is why achieving privacy is desirable. People want to be in public, but that doesn't necessarily mean they want to be public, and there's a huge difference. She says, as Anil points out, our lives are shaped by all sorts of unspoken social agreements. Allowing, and this is where I do agree with her, although I don't know what you do about it, allowing organizations or powerful actors to undermine these social agreements for personal gain may not be illegal, but it does tear 
at the social fabric. You can't disagree with yes, that, it Jeff. it always has. It yeah. always has. That's why, that's why the hacking case in the UK with Murdoch's publications, it goes exactly to that because they tore into something that indeed was private. It was messages with your phone, and it tears at the social well, fabric. We would all agree uh, that that's wrong and bad, and they did get prosecuted, and some of them got right, punished. And, and, and going overboard. You know, some 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 15-year-old says something on Twitter, and the New York Post puts it on page one and ridicules the person. Uh, that's right. bullying. Yeah, I, I agree, but that's not about privacy. That's about the overuse of that power for no good reason but economic gain. Yeah. Just but is smart. that clear? Is that clear though? I mean, when BuzzFeed does a top ten list and and just does a, a list of tweets by people who have ten or twelve followers, who are just regular Twitter users, just talking to their friends and and kind of you know puts them in, in the public eye and then wraps it in ads, as, as Anil said, you know, is that do do, do web content producers see that as as unethical? Is it unethical? Is it okay to I take got one a for you. I'll, give you, I'll give you the same example I just gave. If I put up a web page and I only give you the URL, but it's searchable on Google and you can find it, is that is that wrong? No, I put something up in, on the public net. Yeah, Google, but I mean, Twitter here, I'll is give you a good example. Place. Let me give you a personal example because these are very abstract. So I post pictures of my uh, family trips. I, I, I inadvertently reveal text messages on the air. Uh, a reporter at Gawker, Ryan Tate, goes through all of this stuff, really spends a long time, obviously, going through all this stuff to write a story about how I'm having an affair and my family doesn't know. A story that wasn't factually wrong, except my family didn't know, but, and I wasn't having an affair, but he didn't have all the details because there was some private stuff about the fact that I'd already uh, separated from my wife, et cetera. And it was a very hurtful article that came out on Christmas Eve. Right. Nothing illegal it, done. Completely well, uh, I, I uh, 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 amassed up. from public record. However, an extremely hurtful and I and I think wrong article. Am I wrong? I, I and and, and I, and I threw you. down with Ryan about that article. I was really pissed at him about that. And and he and I went back and forth about it in private over email because I said to him that I thought that it was it was <laughs> well my my problem with that piece is that he hadn't. He hadn't ever gotten in touch with you for, for comment, and he published it on Christmas Eve, which just felt like such a hit. Well, whatever. I don't want to get into this whole thing, but I, I had a serious problem with that, and I talked to him, and I talked to Nick, and we kind of agreed to disagree in the end, but he really argued with me about it because I guess my opinion still holds sway because I used to work at Gawker. Um, but, yeah, no, I that, so like the, but the line isn't clear. I guess this is, this is no, what I'm saying. The line isn't clear. clear. But, but I, right, I that's no, true. Leo, Leo, there was no... It, it, journalistically, there was no news value, news judgment to what was done. It was done clearly just to exploit and to get... Well, and uh, that's the kind of stuff we're talking your, about. That's where I'm saying the balance. Right. There's a balance between the public's need to know and the legal right to do it versus the socially responsible. And that has existed since the penny press. That has existed for yeah, 100 years. That's, o that's always been... That's precisely why people feared the camera. And, and I think exactly what, what led, but I think Brand what Anil's saying is that that, that that balance is no longer being observed. We have in the past trusted uh, our institutions. It's never been observed. It's never been observed. Media had there been yellow journalism has been around for years and years and years. Yeah. And and schmucks are schmucks. There are schmucks right. around, and that was a schmuckish, horrible thing to do. And it was it was no good reason for it, and it was, um, yeah. I mean, it's genius. I don't well, like, there was a good reason for that. it. That is a, um, a very highly uh, read article. They got lots of lots of revenue. Yeah, there was an economic reason to do it, but there was no there was no social reason to do it. There was no uh, higher journalistic end to doing it. There was no need to. Well, that's what world. I'm saying is that. Uh, I, and there's, by the way, there's no law you're going to make about this, but I think it's appropriate to call out uh, media institutions when they yeah, choose to exploit that. for economic ba benefit as opposed to do what they're supposed to do, which is represent the interests of the public. So I've just finished my draft. You're never going to want to read this. Believe me, you're never going to read this. But I've written a 55,000-word tome on White kind of, paper. Now that, yeah, now that the Internet has screwed up everything, Jarvis, what now? And I focus on new relationships and new forms and new models. And in trying to judge what journalism we should save, if we're so worried about journalism, well, we're not worried about helicopters showing you the fire five, 10 miles away, which isn't going to affect you. We're not worried about those stories you just mentioned. We're not worried about the 40th uh, reporting of, of the weather or, or, for that matter, reporting on a football game or a celebrity 
what's the essence of journalism that we really care about? And I, I end up giving a, I start with a very broad definition of journalism, which is helping communities organize their knowledge to better organize themselves. And then I narrowed it down in this analysis of saying, what do we save? What, what do we risk of? That's a very narrow part of journalism. And that's journalism to me that is in fact advocacy. It is advocacy for improving society, yes. for improving your life. Yes. For for and that includes things like getting the bad guys, but yes. it includes other things. I that's, agree. Now, to me, that is journalism. Everything else is entertainment. Now, if I say that, I'm gonna get in tons of trouble. And economically I have to broaden that back out again and include the football in it again. And include the fires and the weather. But I would agree fires. with you hundred percent. I think you're right on. So in that case, to make a journalistic analysis of this, there was absolutely zero justification for what Gawker did to you. It was not journalistic at all. It was purely uh, salacious entertainment. Full stop. They should be ashamed of themselves. It wasn't journalism. It's, now, Nick, it was, Nick, Nick's, Nick's argument is, I don't, nobody, I don't accuse myself of doing journalism. I do what I do. No, but, but this is what Neneal's saying, is that these institutions say, but it's all in public. Everything they used oh, was in public. This, the argument was That's Leo's a person argument. of interest, and this was this was a this screenshot was a matter. It wasn't whatever. just the it was screenshot; video, it was images it was from my Flickr feed. It was all public. They yeah, didn't, they didn't public, delve so into anything used, that yeah. was not public. The only thing the they did is they focused it by taking it all, putting it together. It's not an inclusion. issue of publicness or privacy. That's the wrong analysis. I would argue with Anil, and I'll take him out for drinks, and we'll do this. I, I, I would argue it's a public interest analysis, as the core of journalism. Oh, I agree. I agree with that. Yeah. But that's what I'm but saying, is that the, you have to weigh public interest versus people's right to be left alone. Let's not use privacy. Right to okay, be left so, alone. So the guy, I'll give you another example. So the guy who took the picture of the plane in the Hudson. Yeah. He had, I don't know how many he had, let's say he had 10 followers. Well, that was public interest. Yeah. Right? I agree. So the issue I have is no how many with that. followers he had. Oh, no, you can't, you can't use that. You can't no, refer it was to public. that because that was private because he only has 10 followers. That yeah. analysis doesn't work. Yeah. 